So how does one remove buildup? The simple answer is with water. The natural buildup that happens from sebum secretion and dust particles is easily dissolvable in water and the force from the shower can break it apart so it can easily slide down your hair strands. But for most of us, we use all types of products to style and tame our hair. So to ensure that you're keeping your accumulation and buildup at bay, you first have to understand the type of products that you're using. I suggest separating your products into two groups, solubles and insolubles. The solubility of a product is basically a measure of how well the product dissolves or goes away. So insoluble products are those that are very difficult to remove and soluble products are those that are easily removed. All products have some level of insolubility and will need more than just water to remove it from your hair. As I mentioned, products that are on the soluble side are the ones that dissolve easily. Some examples would be raw one ingredient items like natural oils. Also, most natural products out there are reasonably soluble. And believe it or not, some silicones, yes, silicones, are also soluble. For those of you that don't have the time to research all the silicones in your products, here are some helpful, handy tips. First, silicones are easy to spot on the list of ingredients because most silicones end with C-O-N-E. Also, if you spot a silicone and it has a P-E-G, P-P-G, or both in front of it, then it's most likely a soluble. Removing these soluble products from your hair is easily done with the same moisturizing shampoo you already use. Over time, even soluble ingredients can build up on your hair and scalp, making it more difficult to remove. In this case, while cleansing your scalp and hair after the suds have formed, let the shampoo sit on your hair for a bit longer. This gives certain compounds in the shampoo enough time to grab hold and remove stubborn buildup particles. Products that are on the insoluble side are those that need some extra help to come out your hair. These products usually have more complex ingredients. In fact, if you don't recognize or you can't pronounce at least three to four ingredients in the product, it's safe to put it on the insoluble side. Some examples of more insoluble products are gels, certain hairsprays, and products containing certain silicones and petroleum. Removing insoluble ingredients requires something harsher like clarifying shampoos. Because clarifying shampoos work so well at removing stubborn buildup, they can also be very drying. It's basically a mild attack on your hair strands cuticles. For kinky, curlier hair, this can end up creating a worse problem than you started out with. So the use of clarifying shampoo should be minimal. If you rarely use heavy and soluble products on your hair, I suggest using clarifying shampoos every other month. Or if you notice your hair is not responding the same way, whichever comes first. And if you're a heavy product user, use clarifying shampoos once a month. I'm not suggesting to avoid using products with insoluble ingredients. Everyone has different hair goals and hair maintenance needs, and some may actually benefit a lot from using these type of products. What I am suggesting is to be more knowledgeable and aware of what you're putting in your hair so you can do things to counter their effects and create a balance, a win-win situation. Well, I hope this series of buildup was helpful, and as always, thank you for watching. See you next video!